Okay, we have to talk about AI, right? AI, 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 AI everywhere. So let's talk about AI. Will AI replace programmers? Will AI replace computational designers? Will AI replace architect? What do I think about all of this? So let's go. The main way I can explain what I think about this is this concept of a window. Uh, when people ask me about this, I always say that we have this window of complexity, of window of what we can do moving uh, upwards. And I find that we find ourselves working exactly in the area where we can uh, contribute. So in uh, this uh, metaphor, in this, um, in this window metaphor, uh, we don't have something that's too easy to do. We have below the window something that's already automated, right? Something that you don't have to do anymore that was automated in the past. And we can talk about it. And then at the top of that window, you have kind of the edge of complexity. You have like a, a, a top edge that you can reach just because you don't have time, you don't have the computer power, you don't have the capacity to deal with that kind of complexity. It's maybe something that would take you 100 years to do and you don't have 100 years. So you always have this window at, in, in which you can work and which you can expect results. So my theory is that uh, AI is just another tool for now that will help, help us move this window up. That's easy to see, for example, in the web development because most of the AI hype comes from these uh, tools that can create the entire website at the click of a button and so on. And people are like, okay, it's done, it's over. But it's not over. It's the, the website's development just went below the this threshold, right? It just went underneath the window, which means now that can be automatically done. But if we, skip, if we talk about web development, that means that the whole window went up. That means that uh, some uh, the complexity of the web development uh, some complexity that you couldn't reach before, some kind of a web platform that was too hard to make or, or uh, some kind of a, a SaaS system that was way too complex, now maybe becomes possible because now you don't have, you don't need a thousand programmers to do something, maybe you need 50 programmers to do something and you can finally do it. But I don't want to go into the web development because I'm not an expert there, far from it. I want to come back to computational design. So to explain this in the computational design, I mean, you just have to remember the past. Right? How did programming evolve? You had zeros and ones, right? You had punch cards. And then someone wrote some assembly language where you can actually write co code in some kind of uh, human readable instructions that translated that into zero one. And probably a lot of jobs of people punching cards went away. But now with assemblies, you could do much more. You could do much more complex stuff that you couldn't do with just punching zeros and ones or other kind of uh, instructions. And we went along, uh, <laughs> we went on that, a lot on that ladder, right? We, from, we kept adding abstractions. Uh, we created more modern languages like C, C++. We created Python or so on. So where you can write less and less code and it gets, and then it, that one gets translated all the way down to zeros and ones. And we re finally reached a level where you don't even have to write code, right? You can explain in natural language and AI will help you write code. But doesn't that mean that the AI will replace you? Not yet. I will talk about the, maybe a certain threshold in a minute now. But I think it's just moving the window up. And uh, I... I see that everywhere. Like in my practice, if you, if you go to the website, if you follow me, you know I work on several things. Um, I work on uh, with architects. We have in our office a lot of um, creation of uh, fabrication drawings for facades, for complex structures, and so on. Um, I recently joined a team at the Cosmic Buildings where we create this... Uh, houses for the for for the US for the LA now specifically but the reason why all this is possible why we can do all of this is because the AI moved this window up i couldn't have done all of this a couple of years ago and each one of those projects i couldn't have done to the level to which i can do it now and it's true that some of the things went under the the under the edge of the window which means that some things for which someone would have hired me in the past, now they don't have to hire me because they can prompt that from AI. But I don't care about that anymore because now I gained uh, the more at the top. So um, I will show you examples in the future. I'm not going to share my screen now because I don't want to make this video too long. Um, I will show you examples of different tools that I create for architects, how we do it at the cosmic buildings. But so you 
keep following me on, uh, on Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, on YouTube, and you will see one of those uh, things. But the important thing is that AI basically amplifies what we do and it automates what we do. Uh, you cannot forget that AI explains. So it teaches you, it makes you smarter, it makes you a better programmer because you can use it to explain the code for you. And you, it debugs. Imagine the time, most time wasted in a programmer's life is on debugging, searching for errors, searching for mistakes, correcting those errors. And now AI can do that for you. So what did I say? It amplifies what you can do. It automates, uh, it explains, it debugs. What is all of that? It saves time. That means now you have time and you can do stuff for which you didn't have time before. You can reach complexities you didn't reach before. So you basically climb on the ladder of that complexity. Right? It's a window, it's a ladder. Look at it how you want, but the metaphor is clear. Now, there's a lot of AI online, right? AI, AI, AI. But if you look at it, I'll look at it a bit more closely, or at least that's how it seems to me, 90% of that goes into one bucket, which is rendering, right? It's the creation of pixels. And if you take all that out, that's something that doesn't interest us, especially me as a computational designer, because that belongs to that small phase at the beginning, the creative phase, where you maybe use AI for some kind of inspiration uh, and um, and you, you, you as use AI for visualizations and rendering, which is interesting. We use a lot of that in Cosmic. I will show that uh, in some of the next videos. But the bulk of what's architecture is what building, what's fabrication and so on. That's for me 95% uh, of the architecture. You don't see a lot of AI there, right? There is some, but it's not it's not online. I talk about it in previous videos. It's not on this front end. It's in the back end. So if you take that AI generated imagery, put it in one bucket, then you are left with this real computational design. And that's where AI comes in to my life, to your life, is if you're a programmer or computational designer, and it comes as an assistant. It's not replacing you. It's helping you, amplifying your work, speeding your work up, explaining stuff you didn't know how to before, creating cleaner code for you, like did, do, did, does this refactoring for you, creates like scaffolding for you. It can create, most important of all, it does the debugging, right? And it finds errors in your code or uh, and helps you, um, helps you lift them. Um, for the beginners, it's of course clear, it just supercharges them and supercharges the expert as well. And uh, all of the fears about this vibe coding are... Uh, unjustified if you had me, ask me because you still need to be a good programmer in order to use AI. AI is not perfect. Sometimes it will get stuck uh, on, on, and it cannot debug itself. So you have to find the problem. And that's why you, in my experience, you need to be a really good programmer in order to use AI as your assistant because it's still your assistant. If you try to vibe code the entire Revit plugin or Rhino plugin, good luck. You might be lucky in creating some little thing without bugs, but the ones that know how to program will be moving on that complexity level and you will be at the bottom of that window trying to do some vibe coding while we are expanding our limits uh, at the top of the window and creating ever more complex uh, algorithms, ever more cl complex plugins and software. And that's what we do. That's how I use AI, right? I, if I start a plugin from scratch, I will first advise with AI about the scaffolding of the like the architectural software, and that's where you will find um, this uh, very useful because you will find yourself in kind of a new role. It's uh, less typing; it's more architectural. It's you're designing the architecture of the software. There is a job whose description is software architect that has to think about this whole system, and. So far, you can think of all software having uh, having reached a certain complexity of the system, right? So imagine some large software in our in our industry that would be Revit, uh, maybe, or Archicad, or something like that. It's a huge system, right? A lot of algorithms interconnected and so on. But th those are very complex, and then you need hundreds, even thousands of programmers, and it's a very slow progress of changing something because you change something here in breaks on another place, uh, on another spot. But now with AI, you start controlling that complexity and you can maybe go a level up, create something even more complex that you haven't dreamed of um, before. 
so that's that's the that's the the role of the programmer is now to be much more creative on that side with the help of AI. You you tell it okay, you handle the complexity underneath, especially at the bottom. But let me then move a step up in complexity and uh, with your help, right? And that's that's how it should work. Now because I I could expand on this very easily for like another hour or two. And we can talk about this. I will maybe take one, each of these things as branches and create videos uh, about that because it's worth talking about. But I would, this is kind of a, like a very fast overview on my, of my thoughts about uh, the AI and replacing coders. I don't think that's there. Will it come? It might come. Like for, if you ask me, there is a certain AGI threshold, like artificial general intelligence threshold. That is the theoretical, like, and like when, when the, when the window closes, in the bottom and uh, reaches the top and AGI arrives and can do everything. It doesn't need you to do this, this higher systems thinking or, or it doesn't create mistakes anymore. Or when it creates mistakes, it can debug itself and correct mistakes automatically. It doesn't get stuck and so on. When that moment comes, I think it is possible. It might automate everything, but I think the speculation is useless. I mean, no one knows now. The people are still debating if the, these kind of uh, um, transformer models, large language models, kind of reached the limit of what they can do, or if we can, we need a new uh, breakthrough to expand them. That's not known yet, and all the predictions are probably wrong. So, why waste waste time on them? You no, know? until then, keep walking, keep building, you know, keep expanding the window uh, and keep working on it. And if uh, AGI comes and closes this window, we have a much more uh, uh, many more other things to, to worry about um, aside uh, from like being able to, to program because at that moment a lot of jobs and economies uh, problems um, will arise so yes I'm not gonna go uh, there at all so that was about that AGI threshold a possible one that you shouldn't care about at the moment if it comes it comes we'll talk about that so I will close this video uh, with some uh, closing thoughts that because I get questions like, should I learn how to program? Sh should I basically fear AI? Should I concentrate myself on something else? Should be I become a prompt engineer and so on? If you ask me, nothing has changed that much. AI is another automation tool. Remember, punch cards, assembly, C language, C++, and so on. So this is just another step on the ladder that automates some more boring stuff and uh, enables you to do some more complex stuff, more abstract stuff on, on, on another level. So just another tool, don't fear AI, don't fear uh, programming, fear stagnation. So don't be at the bottom, try to push the limit uh, of, of the window. Learn how to work with it, against it. I noticed there is some natural defensiveness from some people. That's okay. I mean, the, that sentence is so cliche by now, you heard it a million times, that AI won't take your job, but someone that uses AI will take your job. Let's not talk about taking jobs. Let's talk about AI being the tool like any other tool. When the internet came, when Google came, you could have been defensive toward Google, but it simply helped you research stuff, right? You didn't have to go to the library. In the same way, AI speeds you up. It checks your code, it corrects your code, it gives you advice. It's just an advisor sitting right next to you that's, that's an expert in programming but still not better than you uh, in, 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 uh, in this kind of creative systems thinking. So it's not a competition, it's an assistant, and it's, uh, it's a step on the ladder. So it enables more creativity, it enables this merge of, uh, of uh, creativeness and technical, and when it comes to architects, it definitely doesn't replace architects. It just raises the ceiling of the complexity of what we can design. And I'm not talking about now design being complex. You know, I worked in the past on a lot of freeform projects like uh, the Kuwait International Airport, the Shenzhen Airport by Fuxas. We had like uh, Zaha Hadid, Capsark Research Center, the Las Vegas Sphere, the, 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 the Share Zedek Medical Center in Jerusalem. So I worked on a lot of these freeform projects. And when I say the, the AI enables us to deal with complexity, I don't mean necessarily the complexity of the form. We can go back now to creating Mies van der Rohe boxes, right? But there is a lot of complexity in architecture that can go in depth. We can go into, into the detail. We can go into interconnectedness of the buildings, uh, the maintenance of creation of digital twins, 
of uh, smart cities and there's so much complexity outside of geometry that can be introduced and that we couldn't handle that AI can help us not handle now that that's another bunch of uh, videos right there goes another novel as they would say we would uh, we, we we can talk about it and we'll talk about it in the future so let me do what I do always which is make fourth conclusion in a row or fourth closing of the video in a row don't fear AI not for now we'll explore it together if you're interested in this kind of uh, uh, videos follow me on YouTube the pro architect uh, channel on LinkedIn I will start I'm slowly starting to post on Instagram as well and I will do a lot more of these spontaneous videos where we talk about different subjects in many of them I will share my screen, I will show you my code, I will show what we're doing, what we're doing with the DTFLR architects, what we're doing with cosmic buildings and rebuilding the LA and the US soon, uh, what I do with structural engineers, what I do in my uh, office where we create big facades for skyscrapers or structures for large objects, and what we do in our research projects, are like our Algolon projects where we're creating 100% recyclable loam walls, so those are clay, earthen walls, reinforced with 100% natural fibers, that's very interesting, we're creating different kind of configurators, and there, uh, it's still a lot of, it is secret, but uh, we will hopefully come out of stealth soon, and you will see what's happening there. All this enabled by, uh, by you know, uh, by AI. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't be able to do that without AI, but I would be much slower at it and I will probably do it at a, a slower level of complexity, but I am embracing all these tools as should you and in the hope it will give us a better future. Subscribe, share, whatever goes with that sentence um, and stay free. Talk to you soon.